this video, we're going to talk a little bit about a few other items in our admin panel in Thought Farmer. So again, we're going to start by just clicking on our name here and clicking on the admin panel link, which brings us back to our admin panel page here. Wanted to take a closer look at this area today, users and security. And we're going to start by just taking a quick look at our user management screen. That's the first link up here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And this is going to bring up a list of all of the users that are currently on my Thought Farmer internet. You'll see that for this site, we are using regular users, which is a scenario in which you create from scratch your usernames and people's passwords straight from Thought Farmer. You also have an option to integrate your Thought Farmer site with Active Directory if you use that for authentication in your organization. So we'll take a look at the Active Directory option a little bit later. For now, let's just take a look at how regular users are showing up in our internet and how you can create new ones. We can see here that we have an alphabetical list of all of our users on the site. Any users that have since been deleted are showing up here still, but they're just grayed out here a little bit. So we all only want to look at the ones that are coming through in a solid black. Now, if you wanted to take a look at a specific subset of your users, you can use these filters in the left hand side over here. So let's say you wanted to take a look at only those people who have administrator access on your site. You can click on the account type administrator and now it's only showing you 32 people from that list of hundreds of people that you have there. Click on the X here to remove that filter. And now you can take a look at other filters or other groups of people or users within your organization. Taking a quick, qu okay, start that sentence all over again. <laughs> Taking a look at all of your deleted users or anybody who's made inactive. And you can also take a look at all of the users that pertain to a specific security group, which is something we'll talk about later or even a specific group page that is set up through the internet site. Some actions that you can do here when you're looking at your users. So you can see that for each user, you have the ability to click here on this gear icon to edit their account, edit any security groups they belong to, or straight up edit their profile page. If you wanted to perform some batch actions though, you can select multiple users here and then open this action menu here at the top. So now I can in one click deactivate all the, all four users. I can send them another invitation to activate their account, which is just going to fire off an email to them. I can ask them or I can force them to log out and log in again on the next visit. And I can also force a password change. So all of these things you can do not for one users, but tens or dozens of users at the same time, if you wish. Creating a new users on your system, if you are using regular users, is very easy to do. You're just going to go ahead and click on create new user here at the top. And that's going to bring up a new page where we're going to fill out some information about this new user. Like I said, for now, we're looking at the regular user type, which is a user that is set up entirely within Thought Farmer. So there's no Active Directory integration in this scenario. First thing we're going to do is choose their username. So in this case, I'm going to set up an account for Ben and I'll just fill out his full name and his email address. If you wanted to make this user an administrator on your internet, just make sure that this checkbox is checked here. And then we can take a look at inviting this user now into the internet. So there's a few different options here. Um, you'll see the first one is called no password. If we select this option, it's going to create a profile for this person in our people directory on Thought Farmer, but it's not going to send out an invitation to this person. So they won't actually have a login or password associated with their account. Sometimes people choose to set up users in this way if they just wanted to provide them with a profile page where other staff can find this person's contact information, see their profile photo and those kind of things. In this case, it would not be somebody who's actively logging in and contributing to the internet. If it is, this is someone who needs to log in, and in this case, Ben is somebody who needs to have an account and log into the internet, we can choose either temporary password or invite user. If you choose temporary password, you can set the first password for this user straight away. In this case, you would type in the password and then separately send an email to this person with their username and password. 
If you wanted to automate this process a little more, you can check invite user. And in this case, what's going to happen is the person in this case, Ben, will be sent an email invitation that goes to the email address that I've chosen for him right here. And it's going to put a personalized activation link in this email so that all he has to do is open this email, click on the link that is provided here, and then choose his own password. So in this case, I don't really have to do much. I only have to click on create user here. And now all of that information is going to be sent off to Ben. Just click on create user whenever you are ready to send out that invitation or feel free to personalize this message as well or even the subject of the email invitation if that is something you'd like to do. You'll notice that there's certain placeholders in this email template and that just makes sure that the email will be personalized according to certain parameters. For example, the person's first name, the name of your internet, the username that we have chosen for them, all of that information will be pre-filled. If you're setting up with regular users on Thought Farmer and you need to add, maybe you're just launching and you need to add dozens or even hundreds of people at the same time, going through this process might become a little tedious. So in that case, you have a bulk import user option. If you click on that bulk import users button, it's going to provide you with a Excel template. I'll just quickly open it here. This Excel file allows you to pre-populate it with information of all of your users ahead of time. We'll see here that we have columns for people's usernames, their first name, last name, email address, and even additional information if you wanted to fill that out for your users. So in this way, you can add all of your users here in the spreadsheet, save the spreadsheet to your desktop, and then what we'll do is come back to this page here and upload that file that you have updated here. In this manner, you can very easily, in just a few clicks, add all of your staff to the internet. So like I said, that was really the scenario where we are dealing with all of our users being managed directly into Thought Farmer. A lot of Thought Farmer customers choose to actually manage their users by using our Active Directory integration or our Employee Directory Connector as we sometimes call it as well. So I'll quickly show you how that works. We're gonna go back into our admin panel. So we'll see that there's a link here called Employee Directory Connector and that's where we're gonna go for this scenario. Thought Farmer's Employee Directory Connector allows you to integrate with a third-party identity provider such as Active Directory, Okta, log me in and use that third party identity provider to not only synchronize users into the system, but also in sync information that belongs to those users. So in terms of setting that up, we're going to click on employee directory connector here. And in this side, you can see that we already have our Thought Farmer Active Directory hooked up to our Thought Farmer side. It's currently disabled, but all of the information is there. Now, if you're a new customer and you're wondering about how to actually set this up, don't worry. Our support team here is going to be helping you to set everything up. So you don't need to worry about all of the setup process there. Once you have it set up though, I'll show you what some of the options are. So I'm going to click on my Thought Farmer Active Directory. And then now this is where we have a bit more information about the Active Directory domain we are syncing with and how it's going to synchronize between Thought Farmer and itself to manage those users and synchronize any information around those users. So we're going to click here on synchronization settings, and that's going to show us how often Active Directory is going to talk to Thought Farmer and update user information. You can do this automatically or on demand. Now, most customers choose a daily synchronization time so that at, for example, 1 a.m. every morning, Active Directory is going to do a bulk update into Thought Farmer, make sure that any new users that it's seeing in Active Directory will be created on Thought Farmer. If there's any users that are removed from Active Directory, it will remove those profiles in Thought Farmer as well. And you can see that there's many more um, synchronization options here that will happen during such a sync. So if somebody's a member of a specific group or a specific user group, all of that information can be updated between Active Directory and Thought Farmer as well. In this scenario here, we can see that the daily synchronization, the automatic one, is actually disabled. So I'm going to click on edit here. And now I can check any of the actions that I want to be synchronized daily. And I can even choose a time when this is supposed to happen. Perhaps I prefer 5 a.m. And then also how many hours you want to have the frequency of that update as well. I'll click on save here. 
and now we can see those nice green check marks so this daily synchronization is now set up obviously if you are going on a 24 hour cycle for synchronizations and you need to do something in the moment, you can always use that on demand synchronization on top of the daily sync as well. So that is how our employee directory connector works. Moving on, we're going to take a closer look at security groups in Thought Farmer as well. And that is another area that you can access through our users and security section in the admin panel. Now, security groups are a handy way to uh, manage permissions on different pages or sections or groups on the internet. Instead of managing your permissions by adding and removing individuals, you can group them in certain groups in the admin panel. So let's take a closer look. When you open up the security groups page, you'll see that there's a few security groups that are part of the software that are always going to be there. One of them is all registered users. So that one can be used whenever you want to give permission, whether it's view permission or edit permission to every single user who is on your internet. Now we also have custom security groups that have been set up for this particular internet here. There's two types. So we have our regular security groups and we'll just show you how to add a new one. I'm gonna click add security group here. We'll give it a name. So in this, um, in this scenario, I'm gonna give it name executive team perhaps I just want to set up a security group that has all of our upper management I want to make sure that this checkbox remains checked so that it's actually going to show up in that security settings dialog and then what I can do is I can either choose to select people manually from Thought Farmer or if I have a parallel security group that is set up in Active Directory or in another identity provider that you are syncing with, you can choose this second option here that says map members from external user store group. For now, let's just pretend we're going to select our members manually. I'm going to first save the group. And then once I have saved it and it's showing up here in my list, I can now start adding people to it. Right now we can see that it shows me a zero in the members column. Once I click on this number zero here, now I can start adding people to it. And it works the same way as when you do security settings in Thought Farmer. Just start typing the name of the people you wanna add, and you can just easily select them from the drop down, Like this. Click on add, and then click on done. And now we can see we have five people in here. Now the second column where it says securing, that is currently set to zero, but in time it's going to show me a list of all of the pages on my internet that use this security group in their security permissions. So if we scroll down to this human resources security group, for example, we can see that it's currently being used on one page, the customer success page. From here, you can easily click on this link as well to view that group or page and review any security settings there, or we can just click cancel and move on. Now, another type of security groups in Thought Farmer are security groups that are linked with group pages. And that really ties to the content that's on your internet. So I'll give you a quick example of that. I'm gonna go back into the navigation here and I'm gonna find a group page on Thought Farmer. So in this case, let's go into the Whistler branch group. This is set up as a group page. If we take a look at the security permissions today, we can see that not using a security group today other than the all registered users. So to do this, I'm going to go and edit my group page. And you'll notice that there is an option here to use this membership for this group as a security group as well. Hover over the question mark and it's going to give you a little bit more information on what this actually does. Now this feature is only available for groups that have a managed or a closed membership. For open membership where people can just easily join and leave a group, this particular feature is not available. So I'm going to click on use as a security group. And then I can see that it now says that the group membership securing the page is giving me view only permission for everybody who's a member of this group, right? If I click on edit permissions, I can change that. Maybe I, everybody in the Whistler group, which is now showing up as a security group, I want to give all of those people edit permissions as well. So I can just slide that over and click on done. I will save my page. And then if we take another look at our security settings, we'll see that the Whistler security group is now showing up here in this security settings as well. Next up, we wanna talk about the org chart viewer feature in Thought Farmer. 
For this, I'm going to go back into my admin panel and show you where you can set this up. So we're going to go down here in the users and security setting again, and we'll see that there's a link called organizational chart viewer. So I'm going to click on that. And uh, for this particular intranet, this has already been set up. The way you activate the org chart viewer on your intranet and uh, the org chart viewer really is just a visual way to present all of the people in your people directory. Uh, the only thing you have to do is set your top level staff member. So typically this will be the president or the CEO. Um, you can also have multiple users at the top level, right? So if you have, for example, two main partners who lead the company, you can choose to set, in this case, Thomas Tchaikovsky and perhaps Ben as well, right? Uh, it is possible to have more than one top level staff, so you can do that. Make sure that you put the right order here. So in this case, if you are viewing the org chart on your internet, it's going to put Thomas on the left hand side and Ben on the right hand side at that top level. If you wanted to change that, you can just flip them around here. What you do need to do is set a focal user and that can be only one person. And a focal user is just that person. Whenever somebody loads the organizational chart, who is the main person who's going to be the focus or who's going to have an expanded view and, and a bit more information on them. Typically, this will be the person at the top of your org chart, which is what we've done for this one. It's Thomas Tchaikovsky, the CEO of this company. You can set up a few additional configurations here so you can choose the default number of levels that you want to dis display in the org chart on load. You can see what information you want to display for every user as they become a focal user. And you can also set the zoom level. So you can choose how zoomed in or zoomed out that org chart is going to look when it's first opened. It will still give users some options to zoom in and zoom out themselves. So what we're defining here is really just that default state when we load them. Now this is all set up now. Um, you will have noticed that we have an error message at the very top here. And it tells me that there are a number of people who are currently without a manager on my internet. So that means that on their profile page, they do not have a manager set or they do not have a manager set who's currently still an active user. Now for those people, if they don't have their manager set in their profile, they're not going to show up on the org chart. So you want to make sure that if you see this message, click on it and review all of those people in your internet who currently do not have a manager set. If they don't, uh, and as an administrator, you, if you know their manager, you can easily go to their profile page edit it and set their manager at that point. So I'm going to do that for Ben here. Relationships and groups. And we'll put Darren here as Ben's manager. Click on save. And now Ben will also be featured into our org chart. So what does this org chart look like? Let's take a closer look. So you access the org chart in a few different ways. You can access it straight from the employee directory or your people page. Um, you can see here, I can view, I'm viewing my employee directory in the traditional grid view, but I also have an option here at the very top that allows me to view all staff in the org chart viewer. So I'm going to click on that. And this is the view I'm now seeing. As you remember, we chose to display two levels in the org chart, and that's what we're showing here. We have Thomas, who's level one, and then we have all of these people, Thomas's direct reports who are showing up as well. Now, Thomas is the focal user in this default state, right? We're seeing um, we're seeing his, his name, obviously, but also his title, um, a group he belongs to, and then some contact information. Now, this is an interactive org chart, so now we can start exploring. And for example, we can click on Morgan. Now Morgan becomes a focal user. We can even click on the bubbles below her to really explore which people are part of her team and what the hierarchy is within that team. And we can just keep going and explore the organization structure this way. If at any point in time, we just want to go back to that initial state, we can just click on this icon over here. And now it's going to go back into the initial view. Like I said earlier, users can also zoom in and out of this org chart viewer as well. So if I click on the plus sign, it's going to give me some zoomed in information about those people who are the layer directly underneath Thomas. That is our thought from our org chart. Last up, we're going to go back into our admin panel and we'll take a look at an area called configuration settings. That sits all the way down here underneath the advanced section. 
configuration settings. If you go into it, you'll see it's a page with hundreds of little settings that you can modify as an administrator. These are all very small changes that don't really have their own admin page in Thought Farmer, but that still can be very useful as an administrator to make certain subtle changes on your internet. It is a very long list, so browsing through it can be a bit cumbersome. So we usually recommend to use this search field here at the top to find specific things you want to modify. If you can't find the configuration setting that you're looking for, always feel free to reach out to our help desk and our support reps can help you find the one that you need here. So I'm gonna give a few examples of configuration settings that we see that are used quite often. Uh, one of them relates to our carousel page. So just as a reminder, I'm gonna pull this up in a new tab. And the carousel that I'm talking about here is this new suite at the very top. We can see that it, it highlights a few articles here. I can paginate through the carousel, or if I'm not clicking on the arrows, it's going to actually move from one news item to the next in sort of like a loop mode. Now we do have a configuration setting that allows you to set the amount of seconds you would like each news article to be featured in the carousel before it loops to the next one. So I'm going to search for carousel here. Note that as I type in a keyword in the search field, it's going to filter those hundreds of configuration settings to only the ones that have that keyword in it. So it's actually the first one that I want here, home carousel auto rotate speed. And I can change the value here. And this is the seconds in milliseconds, right? So it's not going to, of course, loop every 4,500 seconds. It's going to loop in this case, every four and a half seconds. So maybe I want to change that to 6,000 to change it to six seconds. I just change that value in here and click on save. And now that's effective right away. Another configuration setting that we see quite often is around font colors. We have a rich text editor in Thought Farmer. If you activate it and you're editing a page, you'll notice that you are able to set your fonts color. So in this case, if I highlight my title here, I can click on this button here to choose which font color I want for this particular title. Now, all the colors that you see in here they come default with Thought Farmer, but you do also have an option to customize those colors. Perhaps you have a very specific set of brand colors you want to use in the Rich Text Editor. That is perfectly possible. So what you can do is go into your configuration settings. We're going to search here for font colors. And this is the setting that we're looking, rich text editor, font colors. Now what you can do in this case, and if you hover over the question mark, it's gonna give you a bit more information on this setting. So now I can edit the value of this setting and just give a list of the hex colors, which is just a way to identify colors that are used on the internet and just make a list there for every value that can be used in the rich text editor. So just click on here and then I can go and I'll type a few examples here. and save. A third one, and the last one I'm going to highlight here, a third popular configuration settings is the amount of time users are allowed to edit any comment that they post on the internet. By default, if you don't make any changes here, it's about two minutes. So if I go and leave a comment on Ben's profile page and I save it, I have two minutes where, you know, if I made a typo or, you know, maybe I'm regretting the message I've sent him, I have about two minutes to edit that message. Right now, you can extend or reduce that time frame using the uh, configuration setting, and it's called comment edit timeout. This one right here. This value is measured in minutes. So, if I wanted to provide people with 15 minutes of edit time, I can change that here. And then, for 15 minutes after posting that comment, users will be seeing a edit link on the comments that they have posted. So these are just a few examples in the configuration settings. As you see, there are tons of them here, but again, just encouraging you to reach out to our friendly support team if you ever have any questions and you know we are aware of most of them in here and we're able to point you in the right direction.